Fox 10's investigative series, Preying on a People, demonstrated how Native Americans are being kidnapped and forcibly brought into group homes. It exposed cracks in Arizona's Medicaid system for indigenous people, leading to massive health care fraud. There's a lot of money in this. And now, victim advocates say one state is a hotbed for recruiting. New Mexico. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum joins us live in the studio tonight with how it's impacting one community. John, Christina, tonight in an exclusive interview, we took this issue to Congressman Ruben Gallego. The Arizona Democrat running for U.S. Senate held a roundtable with concerned tribal leaders. But first, we take you to Albuquerque, 500 miles away from Phoenix, a seven-hour drive to where recruiters are enticing vulnerable Native Americans with cash, drugs, and alcohol to jump into a van only to end up in the valley. A target acquired. They ask you specifically if our friends are natives. Sometimes recruited by their own blood. She turns around and tells me, you should go to um, Phoenix. She tells you to go? She told me to go. I told her, no, I'm not going. A pitch to get off the streets. They, they just tell us that if if we want to get off the drugs, and the, 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 they said that they have a house over there for us to um, stay in. But there's a catch. Did they have you sign up for insurance? Um, I wouldn't sign. Oh, all right, good for you. I wouldn't sign. And then did they have you sign up for food stamps? They tried to get me to go to the food stamp office, and I was like, you know what? I said, I'm not gonna. Okay. That's when okay. I started saying, no, nah, forget it, you know, I'm not okay. gonna do it. And they started getting more, like, aggressive. In New Mexico, loved ones are vanishing across state lines. So now seven or eight members of your family are just gone. Ending up in Arizona, Christine Barber is an advocate who works with women on the streets of Albuquerque. She says a third of the women she helps are Native Americans, and she's seen vans approach them routinely. They'll offer motel rooms. They'll offer brand new clothing. They'll offer their own place to live. They'll give them cash. They'll buy them drugs. They'll get them all of these things in a way to, as a way to get them to go to these rehabs. Once recruiters for fraudulent sober living homes or group homes convince someone to come to the Phoenix area, the next move is to sign them up for the American Indian Health Program through ACCESS, Arizona's Medicaid agency. The FBI says scammers build a state for therapy services that are not actually provided. And now that so many Native people are gone from our streets, having been taken to these rehabs, it is just, it has become almost a crisis here. Basically, it's a crisis. I sat down with Ruben Gallego, U.S. Representative for Arizona's 3rd Congressional District. Gallego is well aware of the sober living scheme plaguing the indigenous community. Is the state to be blamed for providing services or paying out funds for services that just aren't being provided? I think the state is to be blamed for not uh, providing the oversight and regulation. I don't blame them for trying to get these services. These services are very important. But when victims are tricked, Barber says stories of trauma are returning to New Mexico. What are they experiencing there? They're experiencing beatings. Um, they have uh, witnessed other um, other women possibly being sex trafficked. Um, they have had to escape um, in, you know, with help of somebody else. Escaping homes or motels where they had been locked up inside with minimal food. The fact that people have died trying to leave these rehabs to get back to New Mexico. It is unlike anything in the 15 years that Street Safe and myself have been doing all this. This is unlike anything we've seen before. In March, Congressman Gallego hosted a roundtable with dozens of indigenous leaders to discuss the crisis. I have heard stories about people being in road infested, uh, you know, rooms uh, or people being neglected to the point where they're found in their feces. I mean, these are the horror stories we're hearing. Coming out of that roundtable, what are your solutions now to stopping this scheme? Well, number one, I do think Governor Hobbs is making the right step by putting a, a task force uh, together. Uh, I also do think that the sober living facilities that are being uh, doing this right now have to have higher inspections. We'd have more active inspections to make sure that, number one, they're actually providing uh, services. Number two, that the people that are, are there are there voluntarily, because this is a voluntary uh, situation. In the situation faced by federal, tribal, state, county and city law enforcement agencies 
is always a challenge in finding the missing. Some of these uh, women and men to be discovered or found, many of them are found in different jurisdictions, and being able to uh, find the correct jurisdiction, reach out to them and have them reach back, uh, it sounds very simple, but unfortunately with the limited amount of time and staff power that exists both on tribal land, but even off, off tribal land, um, it becomes even more and more difficult. Barber is pleading for help. So I guess I'm asking Arizona, could you please fix this? This whole thing is devastating us. It's devastating our native community. And this week I spoke to law enforcement in New Mexico, specifically the Gallup Police Department. GPD is actively working with law enforcement agencies in the Valley, along with the FBI and Navajo Nation Police to find missing Native Americans out of Gallup. Here are the numbers. Since May of 2022, there have been 35 missing persons reports filed in Gallup, specifically connected to people believed to have gone to sober living homes or behavioral health homes in Arizona. 18 of those cases are closed, but police say two of those missing people have been found dead. Gallup Police Chief, uh, this fraudulent rehab scheme, she says, is breaking trust within the Native American community. Take a listen. Vulnerable population is confused. They're like, who do we trust? Who is valid? Who's really going to get me the help that I need? And as you probably... I, as you probably know, we're out there picking up people probably for like the 50th time in hopes that this 50th time would be the time that they would get help. And when they finally said, okay, I'll go with you to get rehabilitation in Arizona. And then they, they, that was the one chance that they took. And then it was false. That is, it, it, it's heartbreaking. And it's, um, you know, for us to have to rebuild that trust here is very difficult. Justin, what you laid out, I'm curious, is, does some of this feed into the homeless population? Yeah, definitely. This is feeding into the homelessness crisis. I mean, just today, an announcement from Arizona's Department of Housing to award $20 million to uh, cities and specifically Coconino County in Arizona. And one of those officials cited the closures of sober living homes and behavioral health facilities displacing people who are affected so help is definitely needed to get more shelter for these people wow. yeah that problem is bad enough and this is making it worse what can people do if they suspect that this is going on we talked about this before see something say something but access arizona's medicaid agency wants people to submit complaints any suspicions you have in your neighborhood we have information on that for you to submit that information on our website fox10phoenix.com there's even a hotline now isn't there definitely 211 Press option seven for people who are affected and displaced. And I'm sure according to advocates I've spoken to, that hotline is getting a lot of calls over this past month. Wow. 211 option seven. Exactly. Okay. Justin Lum, great work. Yeah, thank you.